Rebecca, you won't believe what I just heard. Hi, Mom. What's going on? You know that old hag, Mrs. Peterson, who lives down the street. She just opened her own restaurant. Can you imagine? She always wears the same ragged clothes every day. I bet she doesn't even have a closet. <laughs> How did she get the money to start a restaurant? Something smells fishy here. Maybe she was involved in some shady business. I don't think that's so hard to believe. She's always had a passion for cooking. She used to make delicious dishes for the whole neighborhood whenever we had a block party. Patrick and I actually got her some flowers to congratulate her on her new venture. You did what? Why would you waste your money on that? You don't think it was a nice gesture? That place is doomed to fail. There's no point in throwing money away on flowers for a sinking ship. You should be more careful with your finances. I think it was worth it to support her dream. Oh, you're so gullible. <laughs> you need to wake up and face reality. Do you have any idea how many people have tried to do what she did? Restaurants are the riskiest businesses out there. Unless she's a mastermind of marketing and management, which I highly doubt. I mean, look at how she dresses. How can she run a restaurant? <laughs> the people who succeed in this world are the ones who are realistic. Her dream means nothing. I'm sorry, but I disagree with you. Of course you do. You've always been so stubborn and childish. You still live in a fantasy world. You think everything is sunshine and rainbows. Why do you say that? Because it's true. Patrick told me you still have this silly idea of becoming a baker someday. Is that why you're still working at that dusty old bakery? Yes, it's been my dream since I was little. Oh, there we go again. You and your dreams. <laughs>「So you probably told yourself, when I grow up, I'm going to be a famous baker and make the world a better place with my bread, right? Seriously, what world are you living in? You're an adult now. Grow up. It's humiliating. <laughs> Why is it humiliating to have a goal in life? Because you live in the real world. People who chase their dreams are fools. You should learn from Patrick. He wanted to be an astronaut when he was young, but he smartened up and realized that was impossible. So now he works at a bank like a sensible adult. Get out of this fairy tale you're trapped in. The world doesn't need more dreamers who are clueless about reality. I'm so proud of my son for making the right choice and getting a real job. I boast about him to all my friends. Yeah. Patrick is a real hard worker. You have every reason to be proud of him. He's a wonderful husband, and I know he makes you happy. But we're talking about different things here. No, we're not. Your ignorance is a serious problem. Here's some harsh truth for you. You're an embarrassment to this family. What? I really tried to get Patrick to marry someone better. Like that lovely girl, Taylor, who lives nearby. She works at the bank with him, you know? Yeah, I know her. We've invited her over for dinner before. She's beautiful and smart. She's the perfect woman for my son to call his wife. Uh, you agreed to our marriage, didn't you? You've never mentioned anything like this to either of us before. I had no choice. Patrick made me promise not to say anything about it to you. You two reconnected at your class reunion, right? I thought for sure your relationship would die out in a few months. So you gave us your blessing because you thought it was going to end soon? <laughs> of course I did. Do you even know how high the divorce rates are in this country? I figured I'd let Patrick have his fun with his little old flame. I assumed he'd get tired of you soon and dump you. 
I can't believe this. Do you realize how awful what you're saying is? I'm just being honest. I'm telling you for your own good. You better find someone else before your marriage falls apart. <laughs> I mean, you're too busy making bread or whatever. So I doubt you'll ever find someone as amazing as Patrick. Sorry, I'm going to have to end this call now. I have to go to work. Sure, have fun working at that musty old bakery. Watch out for the flower. It might get in your eyes. <laughs> Rebecca, are you okay? Madeline just texted me and said you had a horrible accident. Sorry, Patrick. You're still at work, right? I feel awful for bothering you with this while you're busy. Don't worry about me. I'm packing up right now. How are you doing? I'm fine. Nothing major, but... But what? What happened? I have a huge slash on my face. You do? That sounds awful. Yeah. It took 15 stitches to close it. The doctor said it might not heal completely. I'm going to look like a pirate when it heals. I'm glad you're still able to joke about it, but you're not in any trouble, right? You don't have any broken bones or anything? No, I'll be okay. The doctor said I was fortunate. Okay. I was so worried when I got the message. I'll probably get to the hospital in about two hours. I hope I can make it before the visiting hours are over. Thank you. I really want to hug you. Oh, and my mom's coming with me. She said she wants to see how you're doing too and visit you. Really? She said that? Yeah, she said she's concerned about you and she wants to make sure you're alright. I'm going to pick her up on the way from my place. Oh, okay. Is there anything you need me to bring you? Some snacks or drinks or anything? No, I'm fine. The hospital food is not very good, but it's bearable. Try and get some rest if you can. You need to heal and recover. I'll be there soon. Hey mom, thanks for coming to visit me today. Is everything okay though? You left pretty quickly. Oh, <laughs> could you blame me? Your face is totally mangled. What? Sorry I left so soon. I thought I was going to pee my pants from laughing so hard. <laughs> Are you serious? You look like a total freak. I'm going to call you Frankenstein from now on. <laughs> the only redeeming quality about you was your face. But that's obviously no longer true. How awful. What's your problem? How could you say that? I don't feel ashamed at all about what happened to me or how I look. Sure, tell yourself. Whatever helps you sleep at night. I bet you're still in shock. You haven't fully accepted that it looks like you're wearing a Halloween mask. You don't need to insult me. I know you hate me. You've made that very clear to me many times. No matter how much you belittle me, I'm not going to divorce Patrick. Please get that thought out of your head. It doesn't matter what you think. I wonder what Patrick thinks about his new homely wife. He said he loves me and he's here for me. Mm, I'm not too sure about that. Didn't you see the look on his face when he saw you? It's only a matter of time before he kicks you to the curb. I don't think so. It's a fact. He was speechless when he saw you. Right when he saw you, he knew you two were done. Who would want to be married to someone who looks like they have a zipper on their face? <laughs> Alright, I'm done having my fun. This is the perfect opportunity for you to get a grip on reality. Give up on trying to stay married to Patrick. Let him go. He needs to find someone beautiful with a good job. Someone like Taylor. Absolutely not. I'm not agreeing to a divorce, no matter what you say. You're feisty, aren't you? I get it. You're hanging on for dear life because you know no one else is going to want you. I don't care about that, though. 
I want you gone by the end of the month. If not for anything else, I just really don't want to see that disfigured face of yours. <laughs> Shut your wretched mouth, you pathetic excuse for a human being. Excuse me? You're a complete and utter disgrace. Is that how you treat Rebecca when I'm not around? Patrick? Yeah, it's me. Oh my god! How? Aren't you home already? We both left at the same time. There was something I forgot to tell Rebecca, so I went back up to her room. I found her crying her eyes out. When I asked her what happened, she showed me her phone. She just went through a tragic accident, and that's how you speak to her? Don't you have a conscience? I couldn't help it. You know, I've always been brutally honest. Patrick, listen to me. You could do so much better than her, especially now, after her accident. What? You're the perfect man. You're handsome, smart, and you have a great job. Rebecca is so far beneath you. I mean, she didn't even go to college. No, she didn't. She went to culinary school instead, and now she's apprenticing with a really well-known baker. What's the problem? You can get any woman on the planet. Why would you stick with her? Taylor, for example. Taylor? I've always said you two would make a great couple. She seems like she'd be a much better wife than Rebecca. Wow, you were serious about that? Of course I was. Taylor's perfect for you. She's beautiful and she has a great career. She works at a bank like I do. It's not that special. Yes, it is. You've got to be really intelligent to work at a bank. You of all people should know that. I actually just had a great idea. Oh, great. What is it? I'm going to open up a nail salon. What? You're going to open a nail salon? It's an awesome idea, right? You have none of the qualifications to open, let alone run, a nail salon. There's no way you can open if you don't have the right licenses or certifications. I'll do all of that. Have any idea how much the startup costs are? It's in the hundreds of thousands. So I was thinking I could take out a loan from the bank you and your future new wife work at. Is that right? You have absolutely no experience running a business or working at a nail salon. There's no way any bank would give you a loan. Well, that's where you come in. If you and Taylor are in charge of giving me a loan, it'd be no problem. I'll be up and running in no time. You're out of your mind. I'll be the talk of the town. Everyone loves me as it is, so I know they'll all come in and get their nails done. Oh, and I'll even call that ratty old woman Mrs. Peterson in. Lord knows she needs all the help she can get to look presentable. Although it would take a miracle for that woman to look good. It's more for me to show her what a successful business looks like. What are you even talking about? What do you mean? None of that is going to happen. You can't just use people to get what you want. That includes me and Taylor. I don't know what's more insane. Saying you're going to start a nail salon with absolutely no qualifications, or thinking I'm going to get remarried to my co-worker. There's no way Taylor would say no to you. Don't be so modest. She's already, what, 35? She knows the clock is ticking. <laughs> I've been biting my tongue out of respect for you, but enough is enough. You're a horrible person. Through and through, do you even have a soul? You abuse and use the people around you for your own personal gain. I haven't said anything that wasn't true. Don't try and pretend like you still love that hideous wife of yours. You don't have to hide how you feel for mommy. She's not hideous at all. I love her, no matter how she looks. I was afraid you'd say that. 
I guess you're living in the same fantasy world as Rebecca. You leave me no choice but to talk about this with Taylor directly. Her mother and I are pretty close, you know. Once I talk with Taylor and her mother, I'm sure they'll see things my way. Go right ahead. Talk to Taylor if you're so confident that she'll listen to you. Or I could just hand her the phone. She's standing right next to me. She is? I'm not sure it would be a good idea, though. She's disgusted with how you've been talking about other people, especially to the person who saved her son's life. She has a son? But she lives alone. And who saved her son's life? Yeah, she got divorced a while ago. She has a son who lives with his father. Today, he came over to her house to see her. Rebecca ran into her and her son at the park today. While they were talking, her son ran out into the street and nearly got hit by a car. Rebecca ran out in the street and pushed him out of the way. That's how she got hurt. She was actually at the hospital when we were here, but she stepped out for a little bit. You left before you could see her. Hang on a second. Does that mean... Yeah, she's right. Everything you said. She saw everything you said about how her clock is ticking and your insane plan for us to get married. She said, I have no plans of getting remarried, let alone to steal someone else's husband. I would never do something so horrible. No, this is just a big misunderstanding. I didn't mean it that way. You're a little late to take back what you said. You said it yourself, right? You're brutally honest? Do whatever you want with your salon. I don't want any part of it. But I'll need your help. You know, I was just joking, right? If you are Taylor, don't help me. How am I going to make my dream come true? I've already told all my friends I'm going to open next year. You haven't started doing anything, but you're already telling people when you're opening? Your dream is pretty stupid if you ask me. Do whatever you have to to make it true. Don't rely on other people to make it come true for you. Like I said, I want nothing to do with this. But Patrick, I know. Just give the phone back to Rebecca. I need to speak with her. It's Rebecca. Rebecca, please. You've got to help me convince Patrick to change his mind. Change his mind about what? Oh, yeah, that's right. You mean change his mind about divorcing me so he can marry Taylor and they can both give you a sketchy loan so that you can open a nail salon? Did I get that right? Yes, please. He's not listening to me. You have a dream too, don't you? You should know more than anyone how important it is to make your dreams come true. If you really believe that, you help me get Patrick to give me the money I need. That's right. I do have a dream. A dream that you called stupid and a waste of time. I very clearly remember you saying people who chase their dreams are idiots. So what does that make you? I was just, um... You're the biggest hypocrite I've ever met. You insult me and call me stupid for having a dream. Then you whine and complain when you can't manipulate people to make yours work. Not to mention you only want this salon for the popularity and to rub it in Mrs. Peterson's face. You have no idea what you're talking about. Sure, you may think my face is hideous, but you're hideous on the inside, and that's much worse. I'm not embarrassed about the way I look at all. I'm a strong, confident person. I'm not going to let this bring me down. The only thing I've ever been embarrassed about is having a mother-in-law that is spiteful and looks down on others. I'm so thankful that Patrick has decided to cut all ties with you. I don't need a soulless person like you in my life. What do you mean by cut ties? He wouldn't really do that, would he? 
Why don't we all take a deep breath and talk about this once we've calmed down? It's late. I'm sure you're exhausted from your horrific accident. Let's wait a few days, and then we can all sit down and talk it out like a family. I'll tell you all about my plans for my salon. Hang on a sec. Didn't you say you hated people who go on and on about their dreams? I couldn't care less about your empty dream. Maybe you should get a grip with reality. You're not a child anymore. And you haven't been for a very long time. <laughs> Hey, honey. Are you still awake? Yep. What's up? Sorry. Did I disturb your sleep? You were probably just about to doze off. Actually, nope. Not even close. <laughs> I'm watching some YouTube videos right now. Man, it felt so good telling your mom off today. Yeah. I'm so sorry about the way she treated you. Why didn't you say anything sooner? Don't worry about that. It's not your fault. You had enough on your plate already, so I just sucked it up. But I should be the one saying sorry to you. I was too reckless, and now I have this huge scar on my face because of it. I'll wear a mask when we go out so people don't have to see your monster wife. <laughs> You're not a monster. You're a hero. You saved a kid's life. If anything, I'm more impressed by you than ever before. Aw, well, thank you. I love you too. I wish I could have given my mom a piece of my mind face to face. I just drove to her house to yell at her, but ended up just sitting in my car and then turning back. Why? What happened? Promise you won't laugh at me? I pulled up to her house and sat for a bit to think about exactly what I was going to say to her. But all I could think about was you. You worked so hard to pursue your dream. You put your life on the line for a stranger. And you're such a loving wife. I got really emotional after that. I didn't have the courage to go and confront her. Really? You got emotional? You didn't even cry on our wedding day. I know. I just realized how blessed I am to have you as my wife, which makes me hate my mother even more for the way she treated you. It's fine. I'm a strong woman. I can take it. I'm so happy that you're my husband. I was afraid maybe you'd actually listen to your mom and dump me. Absolutely not. I've loved you every day since I first saw you in middle school. Nothing's going to change that. Aww, that's so cute. We have enough money saved up, don't we? It's time. Time for what? I remember you said you're ready to be your own boss. What are you talking about? I found a place near the beach for a steal. We just have to do some minor fixes on the inside, but it looks really cozy. The rent is super cheap, and the location is amazing. You've always said you wanted to open a bakery by the sea, didn't you? What? Are you serious? How long have you been looking for places? But by the beach? We live in the city. The nearest beach is like three hours away. If I opened up my own bakery, you'd have to quit your job. I know. And I'm totally fine with that. That was never my dream job anyway. I only took that job because the salary was crazy good. I wanted to make money fast and get out of there. <laughs> what matters more is making your dream come true. Are you sure? Like, really, really sure? I always respected your love for baking. Ever since you told me all those years ago, I loved that you never gave up on your dream even when we met again at the class reunion. I've worked so hard to help you make it possible. You're an amazing person, Rebecca. I love you. Oh my God, you're making me tear up right now. Thank you so much. You won't be disappointed. I know you won't. It's not just your dream anymore. It's our dream. A few months later, Patrick and I moved into our new house near the ocean so I could open my own bakery. I thought it would be a tough start, but thanks to Patrick's help, things have been going better than I ever hoped for. We have loyal customers every day, and we can hardly keep up with the supply. Everything we make sells out in a flash. Speaking of happy news, 
Taylor and her husband came all the way out here to see us. They told us they had a heart to heart and decided to try and make things work between them, mostly for their son's benefit. And then there's Patrick's mother. She went around boasting to all her friends about the salon she was going to open. She actually did start studying to get the minimum qualifications, but she was turned down by every bank she asked for a loan. To make matters worse, it wasn't just her salon flop that people heard about. Word got around about how terribly she treated me and her insane plans for her son. It's probably a good thing her salon never materialized, because I don't think anyone would want to go there after finding out what kind of person she really is. Patrick and I were thinking about visiting her after things calmed down for us, but we're not in a rush. The cut on my face healed pretty well, but it left a visible scar. I sometimes notice people looking at it. I get it. It's not every day you see a girl with a huge scar across her face. But honestly, I'm way too busy now to worry about it. Besides, I'm not going to let it bring me down. Plus, Patrick always tells me every hero has a scar.